Welcome to Naresh I Technologies. This is Ram Chandar. In this video, I am going to be talking about how JVM is going to load the static data and how JVM is going to load and initialize the static data. These two phases I am going to be discussed. So, mainly a data has been classified into two types. One is static data, another one is what? Non static data. Static data nothing but the data which is common for all that is comes under static data. For example, bank provides a rate of interest. So, rate of interest is the common for all the customers in that particular bank. And for example, Amazon dot in provides some discounts due to the new year. So, then those discounts are common for all the customers that is comes under what uh, shareable data nothing but technically we can call as static data. The data which is not common for all the customers or all the end users that type of data we can call as uh, non static data. Now, for example, account number is different from one customer to another customer, pin number different from one customer to another customer number and uh, amount different from one customer to another customer. The data which is not common for one customer to another customer that data we can call as non static data. Now, let me give a, a graphical representation about, uh, about this uh, static and uh, non static data. Mainly, data has been classified into two types. One is shareable and the other one is non shareable and uh, one more terminology we have related to shareable data that is common data and one more terminology we have related to non shareable that is what uh, not common not common means we have one more terminology that is what uh, individual data Technically, in Java language, uh, shareable data we can call as what uh, static data. Non shareable data we can call as uh, non static data or instance data. Data classified into two types shareable and non shareable. Shareable means common for all. For example, uh, discounts and uh, a rate of uh, interest these type of things comes under what uh, static data non static data means what uh, account number account holder name and uh, pin number and amount uh, all these comes under what here non static data so here in in this particular video i'm going to be concentrate on only static data now guys observe here if programmer wants to communicate either static data or non static data first we need to place this data into where memory and if programmer wants to communicating with the non static data again programmer must and should be placed this data into where your memory so who will provide the memory for both the static and the instance data for both the static and non static data JVM is going to be provided the memory. Now, if the data is static by default, the JVM will provide the memory by default without asking any information from end user or programmer JVM by default by seeing the static keyword it will provide the memory. Now, if the data is non static JVM not providing the memory by default programmer must and should be make a request to whom here JVM through what object creation. Now, if the data is static JVM blindly provide the memory. If the data is non static JVM not blindly provide the memory, but with the help of the programmer request through object creation again JVM will provide the memory for non shareable data itself. Now, this is mainly classification of data in Java language wherever you go like uh, core uh, or advanced or spring or hibernate or struts uh, whatever the concept you take mainly data classified into two types one is shareable and non shareable. 
here in this video mainly we are concentrate on how JVM can interact with the, how JVM can interact with this static data, how JVM will provide the memory to the static data, how JVM is going to be executing this static data, those type of uh, issues we will see in this uh, video. Now, static data mainly, mainly classified into three types, one is static variable, one is static variable, another one is static uh, block, another one is static block, another one is uh, static uh, method. We have a static classes also, but uh, here we, I am going to be talking about only static variables, blocks and method. So, here assume I have one small program like uh, this is my small program. Here I am taking one class like a public class demo. In this class, I am taking like a public static void main string ox and here I have some data like a static static int a equal to triple one and I have some uh, blocks like a static block system dot out dot println static block and I have one more method like uh, static uh, int int m1 method here I am writing just uh, m1 method after that I am taking one SOP like uh, a colon plus a and here I am written the value like uh, triple one instead of assign the triple one directly I am calling what here m1 method. In the last video I did talk about uh, how to assign the value to variable with the help of the method return type. Now, observe here, my class, my file name is demo.java. Now, this is our program demo.java. How to compile this program with the help of, with the help of one development tool that is what Java C demo.java. Once we compile the program, we will get one a dot class file that is what uh, demo dot class in the demo dot class contains what here uh, byte code now in the demo dot class what we have byte code now i'm going to be executing this program how can we executing this program with the help of uh, jvm so how to communicating with the jvm with the help of uh, java command now i'm taking java Java command always followed by what demo dot class file. Here simply I am writing demo. So whenever we writing like this, JVM coming into the picture, it will loading demo dot class file from secondary memory to primary memory. Meanwhile of loading the dot class file from secondary memory to primary memory, JVM will doing the following steps. JVM will doing two steps one is loading phase and the one is initialization phase like this we have two phases now first whenever dot class file loading by the jvm then only these two phases are going to be happen now how many times dot class files are loading by the jvm exactly one time dot class file loading by the JVM exactly one time that means all the static data is going to be loading and initialized how many times here only one time whenever we loading dot class file like a demo all these static variables and blocks and methods are going to be loading and initialized so how many times dot class file is loading exactly one time by whom jvm that means all these variables and blocks and methods will be executing how many times exactly one time now concentrate first if the data is variable which variable static variable then jvm will provide memory then jvm will provide memory and fill it with the default value now here for example it is a variable like a static int a equal to 
m 1. Then what happen? Meanwhile of loading, if the data is a variable, JVM only concentrate on what uh, left side of the equal operator. Now, if the data is a variable, JVM will provide the memory and fill it with what uh, default value. What are the default values for uh, int uh, 0? Byte short int long 0, float and 0 0.0 for boolean false for all referenced variables we are getting the default value like what uh, null. So, here my variable is int type that is why my default variable value 0. Now, now with the help of whom with the help of preparer, preparer is one of the special component in the JVM with the help of that component JVM will provide the memory and also fill it with the default value. Now, if the data is a block or programming element is a block then what happen observe. Now, here uh, may be sometimes using the terminology like static data or sometimes using what is static uh, programming element. Okay. Now, if the data is a block then what happen? JVM will provide the memory. For example, in this program, the data is a block, JVM providing what memory and in that memory, the block heading will be placed. If the data is static block, block heading will be read, that the heading will be placed into the memory. Heading will be read, placed into memory. If the data is a method, what happened? Again, heading of the method will be read and placed into the memory. In the static loading phase, this is what uh, static loading phase. What happened? First, the data is a variable. JVM will provide the memory and fill it with the default value. If the data is a block, JVM will read the heading and place it into the memory. If the data is method, same thing is going to be do. Heading will be read and placed into the where? Memory itself. Once uh, the successfully everything is going to be happen, then control goes to where your uh, initialization phase. After successfully completion of the loading phase, uh, then control goes to where initialization phase. What happen in the initialization phase? If the data is uh, variable, what happen? Default values replaced with uh, default values uh, replaced with what uh, original value with the help of with the help of whom initializer if the data is a block block is going to be executed block is going to be executed by the jvm if data is method not executed observe guys no method will be executing automatically if you want to call the method we need if you want to execute the method we need to call Maybe you people having the doubt like uh, main method is, uh, uh, main is also one method na, why it is automatically executed, automatically not executed, Java developer already written that method calling in the uh, Java software, that is why main method will be executing automatically, otherwise main method is also not executed, understand. So, here remember one point, if you want to execute any method, definitely we need to call it. Now, here note point, after successfully completion of uh, static loading phase and uh, static initialization phase, after completion of, uh, after completion of uh, static loading phase and uh, static initialization phase, then JVM control goes to main method. This is what actual process by the JVM before executing the main method. Most of the people having knowledge on uh, whenever we executing the program JVM directly executing the main method. No, not that. Before executing the main method, all this process is going to be happen. In some of the documentation main method like uh, uh, starting of a program. No, st st main method is not executing at starting time. Before main method, before main method, this much of process done by the JVM. Now, whatever the steps I explained theoretically, let me show you all those things uh, programmatically. So, come to this side, we have one program already I written public class demo. 
and now observe here in the main method just I am writing a SOP like a main. Now, whenever dot java, whenever dot class file loading from the secondary method to primary method by the JVM, first what happened? Static loading phase is going to be executed. So, in the static loading phase, what I mention? If the variable is a static variable. Now, what we have in the first statement, we have a method. If you have a method, what happened? Heading will be read and placed into the method. Heading will be read and placed into the memory. So, JVM only read this heading and place it into some memory. After that, if the data is a variable, then what happened? JVM will provide the memory and fill it with what here? Default value with the help of whom? preparer. So, here JVM will provide the memory and fill it with what your default value. If the data is a block, what happened? JVM will read the heading and place it into some memory. And again, what is this int m1? What happened in this time? JVM will read the heading and place it into the memory. After that, do you have any statements? No. Main method completed, variable completed, block completed as well as what m1 method will be completed. Now, once all these uh, uh, statements are, once all these blocks are, once these, all these programming elements are, once all these statements execution completed, nothing but loading phase completed, then control goes to where your static initialization phase. In the static initialization phase, if the data is method not executed, see guys in the first statement I mentioned like in the first line I mentioned in the like uh, main method, main method not executed, then control goes to where second, what is the second one static int a equal to m1, what I am doing, I am calling the m1 method, this is what uh, method calling, so I am calling the m1 method, the m1 method is going to be executed, m1 method is going to be executed. Now, what happen SOP of m1 method, then m1 method will be printed, SOP of m1 method means m1 method will be printed. Now, a value, what is the a value here? 0, 0 will be printed on the console. After that, what we return? Triple 1. So, triple 1 will be placed into varier m1. So, m1 will be replaced with what? Triple 1 after that triple 1 placed into varier a that means 0 will be replaced with uh, triple 1. In the uh, initialization phase this much of process done by whom JVM. If the data is block simply executed what is this uh, SB. Now, here what we have M1 method why this M1 method uh, executed or not executed? Not executed. No method will be executing automatically in the which phase? Initialization phase. But previously executed? Uh, yes, previously executed means uh, the reason is we did call the M1 method. That is why executed. Otherwise, uh, not executed. So, uh, after this, uh, is there any data? No. That means successfully loading phase completed, initialization phase completed, then control goes to where your main method. What we have in the main method? SOP of main. So, main is going to be printed at finally. So, by seeing this structure, we can easily tell like uh, before main method, two phases are going to be happen. One is loading phase, another one is what here? Initialization phase. Once we complete the successfully two these two phases, then control goes to where here? Main method. So, this is the way the JVM can load and initialize the static data before the main method. Meanwhile of dot class file loading from secondary memory to primary memory. So, I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. In the next video, I am going to be talking about how non-static data is going to be loading and initialized. Thank you.